My favorite genre of books is definitely fantasy. And although epic fantasy with big cast of characters and elves and dwarves and war is cool and all, my favorite highly specific brand of fantasy books are the ones that are mostly just vibes. Epic fantasy are like roller coasters, you know, it's big action, it's fast, but I need more people to talk about the fantasy books that feel like dark rides at Disneyland, the one that make you feel like you are stepping into a fairy tale. Hello, my name is Naomi, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hey. Today I'm gonna give you my recommendations for fantasy books with the best atmosphere and I'm gonna go through many different types of atmosphere not just like dark atmosphere also more happy magical atmospheres spooky atmospheres just anything with vibes let's just first get the most obvious one out of the way the goat of all vibey fantasy books are one of my favorite of all time and that is of course The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. It is the epitome of atmospheric fantasy. It's a modern classic. I would describe the vibes here as dreamy and highly magical. It follows a circus that only appears at night and the thing is that the people who do their magic tricks at this circus are using actual real magic even though all of the visitors just think wow what a fantastic magic trick can't believe they're pulling that off out of all of the ones that i'm going to mention i think this one is by far the most vibe based we're using super specific language in this video what that means is that i really think you would love this book if you really want to read a book that is just going to transport you into this magical environment with beautiful descriptions of magic there's not really a very strong plot you mostly follow these different characters that work at the circus if you really love the circus and magician vibes you're definitely gonna love this and if you think that love for that dreamy vibe is gonna be able to carry you through 500 of pages then this is gonna be for you there's also a beautiful elaborate rivals to lovers love story in this one it's not a romance book but it has that feeling of a very fairy tale-esque love story that being said i don't think you would like this if you really need something of a plot like i said this one is the most just no plot just vibes out of all of them so if you need a little bit more drama i think the other books i'm gonna mention are a better fit for you but yeah it's one of my favorite books of all time it's why i love atmospheric books i just want to read stories that make me feel like i'm walking around a little magic land i think that's why my two main hobbies are reading and gaming just pure escapism. That being said, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is G2A. I get a lot of my escapist fantasy needs from playing video games as well. And if you want to get a new game for the best price, you should always check G2A. They are the world's largest marketplace for gaming and digital products, whether you have a PC or a Nintendo Switch or play on another console. They're always collecting the best discounts for games. So for example, currently Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which is one of the most beautiful games I've ever played, they currently have a 50% discount on G2A. So next time you're buying a game, always check out G2A for a discount. I have a link in the description. Okay, next is if you're looking for something with kind of nautical slash Roman vibes, I have here Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I would describe the vibes here as sciency, lonely, and vast. The book is named after Piranesi the artist and if you take a look at the art of Piranesi that is the setting of this book and also perfectly encapsulates the entire atmosphere and vibe of this story. This one is kind of a mystery. You follow a man who is in this Piranesi-esque setting. He seems to be completely alone. He doesn't know why he is in this place he doesn't have a memory of before all he can do is just walk around make notes and trying to figure out in a very like scientific manner how to understand this world like when the tides come in or making a map of the area there's only one other person another man that he sometimes meets with that he calls the other 
And the plot of this book is basically just figuring out what the heck is going on. I think you would really love this if you enjoy mystery vibes with an unreliable narrator. I don't think that's a spoiler to say that this is an unreliable narrator because the whole point is that he doesn't know. He has no memories, he has no idea where he is, so that by default makes him an unreliable narrator. You would enjoy this if you like themes of knowledge and academia, and especially the limits of our knowledge and how what we know and like our framework of knowledge, how that influences our behavior and the things that we do. You should stay away from this book if you easily get annoyed by main characters doing kind of dumb things. Like the kind of the point of this book is that you as the reader know more than the main character, which inevitably leads to the main character doing things where you're like, you should not be doing that. <laughs> the story really borders on a contemporary mystery with the only fantastical element being the setting. So if you really want something more magical, that's not what you're gonna get from this book. Then I actually have here four books based on Slavic folklore. Apparently very common among the atmospheric books that I've read. Um, let's start with two books that have cold and snowy vibes. The first one is Spinning Silver. The vibes in this book I would describe as snow fairies and castles, royal and icy. The book follows four perspectives, but I would say two are the most important. On the one hand, you have Mariam, who is a money lender. She can turn silver into gold which catches the attention of a fae species who take her to their fae land and she has to turn silver into gold for the fae king. And on the other hand, we follow Irina in like the normal world and she has to marry the Tsar, but the Tsar is a horrible man because he is, you know, possessed by a demon. You will love this if you love stories about women finding their power. If you like multiple point of views, but still like a close first person perspective. I think out of all the books I'm gonna be recommending today, this one is the most like epic fantasy in the sense that it has a grand sense of adventure and questing. I don't think you would like this if you <laughs> very easily get annoyed and confused when it gets hard to uh, differentiate between the different point of views because they're all first person. And sometimes I was like, I don't know in whose head I am. Also, don't expect a romance from this book. I think when you start reading this, you might think it's gonna get very romantic, but that is very much a little bit of sprinkle in the background. There's barely any romance in this book. And the second cold snowy book that I'm going to recommend is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. I would describe the vibes here as small town snowy, demonic folklore. It's about a young girl, Vasilia, who lives with her family in the Russian countryside and she is the only one in the family that can see the folklore spirits. But with the growing cold, she has to leave her family and go look for the Winter King in the forest. I think you would love this if you love pure folklore vibes. It almost feels very strongly like historical fiction with a little bit of folklore sprinkled in. It talks about the harsh life of being a poor family in the countryside, religion, orthodox religion. I personally wasn't a big fan of the series and I never really could get through it. Um, it's also, by the way, the one, I think the only one on this list today that is a series and not a, a, a standalone, so you have to know that going in that you are signing up for an entire trilogy. The reason I personally really couldn't get into it is because I think it has that very strong historical fiction vibes, which is just not really my genre, and the way it's written is very folkloric, very bird's eye view, where you're just going over everything that's happening, but there's not a lot of focus, if any focus, on the character's internal world, which really stopped me from getting attached to the characters and that just really stopped me from just being able to really enjoy the story. Next on the Slavic folklore list is one that has more foresty magical vibes uh, and it is of course I couldn't make this video without talking about Uprooted. <laughs> I need to reread this book because it's been six years. It's been seven years. Oh no it's been six years. Still a long time, I need to reread this. I would describe the vibe of Uprooted as towers overgrown with roots, evil forests, magic, and wizardry. 
Every 10 years, the wizard in the tower called the dragon takes a girl from the valley in exchange for him defending the valley from the evil forest. And we follow our main character Agnieszka as she is chosen. Um, and it's kind of a romance. And this evil wizard starts teaching our main character magic. So you would love this if you like a little bit of a villain romance. <laughs> Especially if you also love the master apprentice trope because this evil wizard is the villain and he's teaching the main character magic. I think my preference for those tropes were just born with me reading this book. You will love this if you really enjoy reading vivid descriptions of natural magic. It has great female friendships and of course the beloved evil forest trope which I know a lot of people love including me. I don't think you would really like this if you don't like very soft magic systems. I mean, most of the atmospheric fantasy books, almost every atmospheric fantasy book has a very soft magic system that doesn't have a lot of rules and is mostly just there to be vibey and magical. But in this one, the magic system is still used very often to solve problems, making it kind of a deus ex machina, which I know can really annoy a lot of people. So just keep that in mind. Okay, and then the last of the Slavic folklore books, this one is a little bit darker than the other ones. And it is Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. I would describe the vibes in this book as witchy and visceral and a little steampunky. It takes place in a town that is kind of on the precipice of the industrial revolution where magic is becoming less and less common and people are getting, you know, like electricity and stuff. We follow Marlinchen who is locked in a tower with her two sisters by their abusive wizard father. The entire family are witches. And it is a retelling of the juniper tree, which to be fair is a fairy tale that I didn't know. Um, but that didn't hinder me from really enjoying this book. I think you would absolutely love this if, first of all, you enjoy a slightly darker atmospheric book with like slight horror themes. I also think you would like this if you enjoy what I would call like fantasy stories without a fantasy plot. Let me explain that. This is not an adventure story or like a big epic fantasy quest. It is a story about family abuse. It is about a traumatized young woman learning to stand up for herself and it is filled with female rage. You could call this a corruption arc. It's a book that makes you think is this really a corruption arc or is it kind of a slay? I don't think you would like this if you don't like the darker elements. Like keep in mind there's some gore in this, there's some slight horror elements, there's cannibalism and it just covers a lot of very dark themes that might be triggering for some like, well, family abuse but also sexual assault. Okay, moving on to another book that is also slightly darker but for if you want something less magical and a little more mushroomy <laughs> and that is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This one's technically not a fantasy book but it definitely has supernatural elements, so I'm gonna count it anyway. The vibes here are 1950s Mexico, gothic, haunted houses and mushrooms eating away rotten wood. It's about a young woman named Naomi who moves in with her cousin's new family mansion. And there's just some weird things going on in this mansion. And she's just trying to figure out the mystery behind this family's history. It deals with family wealth, past violence, exploitation, patriarchy. I think you would love it if any of those themes sound interesting to you. You can really tell the author took a lot of inspiration from We've Always Lived in the Castle and the Yellow Wallpaper. So if those are stories that you enjoy you would probably enjoy this one too. If you like the haunted house trope, then this one is a staple, especially if you like a little bit of spooky vibes. However, this book may set the wrong expectations. If you really want like outright horror, this isn't like that scary or anything. Also, don't expect a romance in this and it is a little bit slower paced. Continuing with the dark mansion vibes, uh, we have The Last Till the Flower Ride by Roshni Chokshi. The vibes here are dark gothic mansions, lush and rich, but also fey lands and I love how she combines those things. This is a story of a groom who marries a mysterious woman, moves into her big 
scary man shit <laughs> and he's not allowed to uncover her secrets but of course he cannot help himself and then you also follow the point of view of this woman's childhood best friend and in essence this book tells a story of a very toxic friendship dynamic between these two young girls you will really like this if you enjoy stories about twisted relationships between two people you would in general love Rashmi Chokshi if you love a lush and dramatic writing style that takes a lot of metaphors and little stories from folklore and mythology like there's so many little nods to many many different mythologies and folklore in this one but that can also be the downside of this book you would not enjoy this if you easily find prose too purpley and also this is another one of those books that i would say is like a fantasy setting with a non-fantasy plot so if you're looking for more like adventure and stuff this is not gonna have that. Okay, uh, by the same author we have a book with slightly more romantic vibes and this is The Star-Touched Queen. This is Roshni Chokshi's debut novel. The vibes here are lush, magical, astrological and romantic. We follow Maya, who is married to the king of this beautiful kingdom. And it mostly just involves Maya trying to uncover the king's secrets and wandering around his beautiful estate that is filled with magic and glass gardens, locked doors and references to mythology everywhere. You will love this if you love the no plot just vibes thing. There's barely any plot, it's mostly just descriptions of these beautiful surroundings. Like if you are, if you like the night circus and you just like being transported into this different magical world, you're gonna enjoy this. So just like the night circus, you're probably not gonna like this if you do need a bit of the plot to enjoy the story. Also, this one is young adult, so the romance and the breath of the dark secrets does remain pretty like tame. Also, this does have like a really beautiful a dramatic romance in it, which I found really nice, but I can totally see could make some people gag. Okay, moving on to the last two books that have slightly more like uplifting, happier vibes. The first one that I would recommend is House Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. Yes, I know, we've heard it, we've heard it before. <laughs> but it fits. The vibes in this book are wizardy, meadows filled with flowers and falling stars. It has a similar setup as the movie, the Ghibli movie, where you follow Sophie who is cursed to become old and she moves in to Howl's moving castle uh, to undo her spell eventually. But the rest of the story, the way it unfolds is very different from the book. Um, there's a lot of little quests, little adventures, little magical potions that need to be made. You would love this if you like the movie, even though it's different. If you like the movie, you will probably like the book. If you're looking for something a little bit more uplifting, you like quirky characters. Don't read this if you just expect to re-experience the movie obviously because that's just not what it is. I'll have to admit it's been a while since I read this book and I don't have my copy here to check it for you but I'm also pretty sure that there isn't like much romance. I know the movie has a little thing going on between Sophie and Hal but I don't remember that from the book and if it's there it's not very prominent, so just know that. And if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. I can't check it because I don't have the physical copy. And the next more uplifting atmospheric book is a book that it's technically also happy, but it's happy not in a green flowery meadows kind of way, but more in a perusing old libraries kind of happy way. And that is Sorcery of Thorns by Marjorie Rogerson. It's technically a slightly darker tone because it's about old libraries and forbidden magic, but I personally found the overall tone of this book to be pretty lighthearted and fun with like friendships and wizards. It's about a girl who grows up in a library tending to the books because every book houses a monster and if the books escape, then the monster comes out. The story of course starts when a really really bad monster book escapes and the main character has to go after them. You would really like this if you like a cozy fantasy adventure with very fun characters. There's like a lovable demon character, there's a wizard character that a lot of people have compared to Howl from Howl's Moving Castle. And of course if you like 
books about books because libraries and book monsters play a very big role in the story. I personally thought this was just so-so. You probably won't really like this if, like me, you don't like it when things come a little bit too easy for the main character, like she learns her magic, in my opinion, just a little too fast. We also don't have like the most interesting main character, which is why I didn't personally really love this book, but I also understand that sometimes you just want to read Sorry for the intermission, our toilet is broken. So our landlord came by to try to fix it, but he can't fix it. So our toilet is just still broken. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Sorcery Thorns. Okay, so yeah, indeed we have a main character who isn't particularly interesting, but I totally understand that sometimes you just want to read a story where a main character is just someone who isn't, who's just like, Typical, you know, sometimes you just want that. And also the story has kind of like a mustache twirling villain, which I also didn't really like. I also want to put some more books on your radar that are supposedly very atmospheric fantasy. I put off filming this video for such a long time because every time I want to film it, I came across another atmospheric fantasy book and I was like, wait, but I have to read that one first before I can make a video about it. And then I would read it and then there would be like three more atmospheric fantasy books that I learned about and I was like, no, wait, I can't make this video until I've read these. And that just like kept going ad infinitum. So I've just decided right now I'm just gonna make this video and now it's just gonna be a section of books that are on my radar that I know are also described to be very vibey. So I, even though I haven't personally read them, I do wanna put them on your radar as well. So the first one also on my radar is another from the author Ava Reed and that is The Wolf and the Woodsman, which is about a wood secret magical wood and it has an enemies the lovers plot line which sign me up then there is strange the dreamer by laney taylor this is a beloved ya fantasy that is very like i mean dreamy of course it's called strange the dreamer it's about a mythical city called Weep. There's a character called the God Slayer and it involves a blue skinned goddess. Overall just sounds very like absurd and whimsical and I think it's gonna be great. I also know that Lainey Tainer supposedly is a very like lush writing style and I like that. My camera is running out of juice. And then basically a whole author that I'm trying to get into is T. Kingfisher. The first book of her that came on my radar is Nettle and Bone which is about like also about a young girl who strikes to the witch to kill a prince. It is described to well include like a witch, a knight and a chicken that is possessed by a demon. <laughs> I know T. Kingfisher is an author that has won many like fantasy awards and I think also like Nebula and Hugo awards and from what I know her style is kind of described as being you know also like a little quirky but also has that fairy tale element to it. Then there's this new book that recently came out that I really want to get my hands on. It's called Bitterthorn by Kat Dunn and it basically sounds like exactly like Uprooted except it's gay about like this witch in kind of like a tower or a mansion or a castle that takes someone to her castle every so many years and our main character gets taken by the witch and has to live with her in her estate and there's magic involved this sounds like my thing i just want to experience uprooted again <laughs> oh there's a novella called silver in the woods i know that many of you have already recommended this to me i didn't know it was a novella which makes me want to read it more because it's short. <laughs> this has won the World Fantasy Award for Best Novella and it's about a magical wood and the people that live there. Uh, and then lastly, I just want to get into Neil Gaiman. I know I say this so often and I keep putting it off because I just didn't really like Neverwhere, even though I know that's not his most loved book. Like specifically, I wanna read Stardust, which is supposedly a very atmospheric story. Um, so if you have any other recommendations for where I should start with Neil Gaiman, if I want his atmospheric stuff, please do let me know. Oh, and of course, duh, I can't believe I almost forgot this. The other Aaron Morgenstern book, The Starless Sea. I keep putting it off because I have such high expectations for this one because I love the Night Circus so much. So as you can see, there's still so much atmospheric fantasy to read. And uh, once I've read more, I will make like a full guide on it. This is more like an intermediary video. I want to thank all of my patrons for supporting me with a very special thanks to my elite Hidden Library members. If you enjoy talking about books with me, subscribe to the channel. 
we'd love to have you here if you want to join our book club join the patreon and that being said i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and i will see you soon in another video very soon goodbye